And it's good to see everybody this morning. Are you awake out there? Uh, oh, boy. Let's try it again. Are you awake out there? Yeah. <laughs> I, I ain't buying it. <laughs> must have been a busy week. We must be still trying to wake up from all the rain this past week and everything, right? To get to see the sunshine this morning and everything. Isn't it a beautiful day out there? Yeah. There is something special, something nice about a day uh, after the rain in the morning, in the morning when the sun pops up and it's just, the air just seems to be real clean and crisp out there. I mean, it's just there's just something really neat about that. I am I'm so thankful for that. Okay, are y'all sure y'all are awake? Huh? Uh, Tony, Tony, Tony told me this morning. Be sure and don't look at him over there because he said he said I'm I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you. He had to nurse an old heifer calf last night, trying to have a calf herself, and and I think uh, he he was he's been up all night. And he says, "I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you, if my eyes are closed and my head is bowed, I am not meditating. I'm sleeping. I'm just telling you, right off, right off the bat. That's exactly what's. Did I, did I embarrass did I embarrass you? <laughs> hey, this morning, uh, like I said, great to see everybody. So thankful that you're here. Thank you for taking the time. To, to get up and to come and be a part of the church family. We are so very grateful for that. Didn't Brandy do a great job uh, on that song? And <laughs> There is something special about those places where you can just go out and be with the Lord, right? And, and, and for me too, I like to get out there and, and see those very special places and th- be in those special places and talk with the Lord. That kind of tells me or kind of helps us to get uh, introduced to what our message is about this morning. I ask you a question. How's your attitude this morning? Sleepy, right? Sleepy. How's your attitude this morning? How's your attitude been this week? How's your attitude been this month? How's your attitude been this past year? How's your attitude been your entire life? Huh? <laughs> This message, I'm just going to tell you, this speaks to me. Uh, and if you don't get anything out of it, I guess maybe it was meant for me. I don't know. But I, you know, just checking attitude, just checking our attitude and what our attitude is all about. Uh, sometimes it's hard to have a good attitude all the time, right? Especially when we're tired. When we're tired, it's hard to have a good attitude, right? It, it's hard to be motivated about anything. It, it, if, our, if our attitude is is kind of down and everything, it just, everything seems to be down, right? So we look at our our attitude and think about our attitude. Uh, Paul has something to say about our attitude and what that is and what it means and what our attitude should be irregardless to what life brings. Uh, Not going to sit up here and tell you and try to patty cake things and tell you that life's all hunky-dory and fine and just great and all the time and things. We know better than that. We know it's not the way that it is. But we also know that, that down deep inside, if we have Jesus Christ inside of our life, we have something that helps us to maintain joy, to maintain attitude. So this morning I want to try to just help us to fi- kind of look, look back in that and see that. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice, he says. Did you wake up then? <laughs> Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. How many times do we come to a place and we get caught up in things? And I'm going to tell you, I get so caught up in some things sometimes that I, I try to jump into action or I try to move into action And I forget to include God. I I, I spring into action. Something happens. Something takes place. I get the phone call. I need to rush to the hospital. I need to be there for this person. I need to to get there as quickly as I can. And and all of a sudden, I find myself, I'm halfway to Bartlesville or halfway to Tulsa or something like that, and I'm going, here I am doing all this stuff. I need to be praying. I need to be praying. And Paul's trying to tell us 
that we're not supposed to be anxious. Now, how many of us find this pretty difficult? How many of us? Y'all still aren't awake yet, are you? <laughs> how many of us would be honest to say we get anxious about some things, right? Don't we? Don't we get anxious about stuff? There's problems, there's worries, there's things that comes on, there's just different things that happen, and, and we find ourselves getting real anxious about one thing or another. And there's a reason why Paul is telling us not to be anxious. It's not to take control of our life. So many times what happens is, is we allow anxiousness and or worry to control our life. Have you ever met someone who was just a constant worrier? I mean, have you ever met someone who was just like, you know? My mother, and probably because she had to raise me, was a warrior, is a warrior. Still to this day, she, she sets and she, she, she has a lot of time to think and stuff like that, and she'll, she'll worry about a lot of things. And I, I remind her, I said, Mom, I said, Mom, don't, don't worry about it. I said, we need to be concerned, but let's pray about it, okay? Let's, 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 let's pray about those things and stuff. And she's got all kinds of... She finally got a granddaughter uh, this, this last time around. My brother had a, had a little girl, but... but the, all the rest of us are boys, and she's had to deal with men all of her life, and so we've given her plenty of reason, I'm sure, to be worried and different things and stuff as, as we all have grown up. But she, she, we, we, we have to kind of sometimes talk with each other, and she'll call me and she'll say, Wendell, I'm, I'm worried about this or I'm concerned about that, and I'll say, Mom, let's just, let's just slow down and let's pray about it. And let's, let's, let's think about this and let's pray about it. Paul says not to be anxious about things, but here's what we're supposed to do. Prayer and petition. How many of us feel guilty about asking God for anything? You ever, you ever pray and, and, and feel guilty about asking God? Because after all, our, here's, what, here's what we're taught. And this is, this is true. This is accurate. This is what we should do. We should be concerned for our brothers and sisters. We should lift them up in prayer. We should uh, want to uh, think enough of them that to, to, to help, you know, to remember them in prayer and to, to, to constantly be lifting them up. But here's something that we often fail to do. We often fail to come to God with our petition. What's a petition? A request, right? It's a request. If you're going to petition somebody, you, I mean, you're going to ask something of somebody, and, and we, sometimes we feel guilty about requesting something of God or asking something of God. Now, it all has to do with attitude. It all has to do with how we come to God with it. But God, who are we? God's what? Children. Okay. If we are God's children, how many of us have ever looked at one of our kids and looked at them and not allowed them to ask us something? God doesn't mind you asking for something. Now, the answer might be no. The answer might be not now. And the answer just might be yes. Right? But when we come to God and when we talk with him, he, want, he wants us to be able, and he wants us to feel free enough to be able to do that. All of this helps me to come back with the kind of attitude that I have, the kind of attitude in which I find myself in. If I am in an attitude, if, I ha if I'm dealing with my attitude, how many of us would say, let, let, me, let me back up and say, how's my, how's my attitude? Is my, is my attitude overall positive or has my attitude been kind of negative? Has the glass been half full or has the glass been half empty? How's, how's my attitude? How am I looking at things? How am I seeing things? What's been going on? What's been happening? I, my attitude needs to be checked. I need to check my attitude. And one of the things that I can do is I can come to God, and I can come to God with prayer. I can come to God with petition. I can come to God with thanksgiving. And I can present those requests to him. Paul continues and he says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Have you ever experienced the peace of God? You ever been in one of those anxious moments? 
And then all of a sudden, you get your answer. All of a sudden, you just feel God's presence. All of a sudden, you can, you can feel, you can understand God's got it. He's in control. He's got hold of it. And we sit around and we worry about these things and let our attitude get to a place to where it's kind of getting on the negative side of things. When all the while, God's got it. How many of us understand God's got it all anyway? You know, for the Christian, I think one of the things for us to try to, is to, try to understand, and probably this is where we let a whole lot of the world or the humanness of us come in and different things, to be, to be able to give everything over to God. Everything. When most of us like to be in control, right? We want to be in control. We've got to have some control. We can't let loose of all this. We can't, we can't turn something loose. We can't turn things loose. How many of you have given your kids over to God? Seriously. How many, how many of us have, have really and truly said, this child you have blessed me with is mine only for a little while? They're going to be an adult someday. And you've blessed me with this child just for so long. Have we given the child to God? You know, we do our baby dedications and things and stuff. That's one of the things that we're, that we're kind of doing. We're trusting God that, the, that God's going to be in control and he's going to guide and direct things in this child's life that when they can come to a place and come to a, the, the time where they can reason and be able to understand who God is and what he has done for them in their life that they can make the decision to have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. But we've got to truly give the child to God. How about our finances? How, how, how about our, our, our finances really and truly God's? Uh, how, about, how about our house? How about our home? Is that God's? Have we really and truly said, God, this is your house, this is your home? Uh, I get to live here, but it's yours? See, I think so many times what happens is we, we kind of go through life and we begin to get anxious about things and we start trying to take control of things. And all of that then begins to affect our attitude and how we look at things. And then uh, how, not only how we look at things, but also how we deal with people. How many of us understand that we're in the people business? Okay, all right. I, I can tell right now y'all are asleep. Goodness gracious. Okay, all right. Everybody turn around and look at each other. Look at each other. Come on. Come on now. All right. How many of us understand that we wouldn't be having church this morning if we didn't have people here, right? So we're having church because of what? People are here, right? And why have we come together to here today? What are, what are we doing? We're worshiping, right? And we're trying to learn more about God, right? We're trying to learn more about who Jesus Christ is and how our relationship is to him and his to ours, right? So when we, when we do that and when we look at that sort of thing, we're in the people business. So guess what? What our attitude ought to be. Now here's a big, que here's, here's a big question for you. Here's, here's a real big question for us this morning. How many of us got out of the car and stepped onto the parking lot this morning? And before we got out of the car, we looked like this. <laughs> and when we got out of the car and stepped on the parking lot, we went... How are you doing this morning? Fine, fine. I'm doing good. Fine, fine. How's everything been going? Fine, it's been going fine. Are you sure? Absolutely, everything's been going good. It's all great. Hunky-dory, nothing's wrong. Every time I talk to Becky on the phone, everything's hunky-dory. She's always hunky-dory. You see, our, our attitudes and 
what we can do to help our attitude matters. Because, and here's, here, here's where it boils down to. Why? We deal with people. Now, I know, I know what some of us are thinking right now, but you don't know who I had to deal with this week. You don't know who I had to talk to this week. And my attitude was fine before I talked to him, but my attitude was terrible after I left, right? I mean, we know, we know you know, I'm, I'm, I know things happen. I know different things like that go on. But here's what we do. If what we will do is if we will pray, if we'll, if we'll give those things over to God. How about, the per- how about the person you're not getting along with? Did you give them to God? I ain't about to. They made me mad. I ain't praying for them. Right? Well, what did Jesus say we're supposed to do? Pray for them. Give them to God. Let, let God have them and let God deal with the relationship. Amen? So our attitude, how, how we deal with things, what we do, we're, we're talking about our attitude this morning. If what we'll do, if we'll do those things, the peace of God, how many of us understand that this, this is indescribable? You can you call it peace, but it goes far beyond that. It transcends, Paul put, says, it transcends understanding. We just know that we've got it. We just know that we're experiencing We know that it's something that's real in our life. It's something that's real in our heart. That we can, that we can use that, and it will help us to continue to remember who Christ is in us. <clears throat> Paul reminds us and tells us to do this. If we will do this, if we will do this right here, it will help us with our attitude. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What negative do you hear in there? Is there anything negative in that statement? Nothing whatsoever. So here's what we're supposed to do. Wives. Shell. When I forget to take out the trash. <laughs> okay, when I forget to, when, when I don't take the trash out, okay? You're supposed to think about other things. You're supposed to think about how much you love me and how much you care for me. And and, and anything else you think is good. Okay? Before you fuss at me about taking that trash out. So far, she's, she's not buying it, I don't think. If what we do, if what we do is continue to remember the positive things. Now, here's, really and truly, now here's, here's some advice. Uh, and, well, you think, well, boy, you can give advice, but I mean, I, th- I, think, I think you can agree with this. When you start to get into a disagreement about something, you've never had a disagreement, have you? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, never had a disagreement, right? A discussion. When you get into that disagreement or into that discussion or whatever, Before you go whole hog into that thing, remember who you're talking to. Remember that you love them and that you care for them. Remember that God has blessed you with them. We get so caught up in life sometimes, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I may be talking to husbands and wives this morning, and, I, and, and Michelle and I, we've been married long enough now that I think I can talk about a few of these things anyway. 
that sometimes what happens is we start to take each other for granted. They're just there. They're going to be there. They were there when I got up this morning. They'll be there when I go to bed tonight. We get caught up in life and we get caught up in doing things and the frustrations of this and the frustrations of that and the business bill's got to be paid and that bill's got to be paid and we ain't got the money to do it and we, you know, all the different things and stuff, all those things coming together and stuff. And then we come together and we start to have this what? Discussion, which turns into a, an argument. When if what we will do is if we will remember who it is that we're talking to, Who it is that, you know, why, why are we with this person to begin with? Because I love them. I love Michelle. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, I love to do this to Michelle, it, I think it aggravates her good whenever I do this to her, but we'll have one of our little discussions, you know. That, believe it or not, pastors and pastors' wives do have discussions from time to time, Okay. We'll have one of our little discussions, and one of the things, and I'll, she thinks she gets the last word in, but when I walk off, I said, I'm going to love you anyway. <laughs> no, ma no matter what. I'm going to love you anyway. No matter what. And brothers and sisters, you know, when, when we look at these things, when we do these things, here's, here's, what, here's what I should be doing. I should be remembering about Michelle. What is noble about her? What is right about her? What is pure about her? What is lovely about her? What is admirable about her? And if I find any of those things that, that she does in, in those things, I should praise her for those things. And those are the things that I'm supposed to dwell on. I can't tell you what our last argument was about. When did we have our last argument? This morning? <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't tell you what our last argument was about. I can tell you that I love her. I can tell you that I'm glad she's my wife. I can tell you that I'm glad she's here. I can tell you that I'm so proud of the ministries that she's been doing and participating in. By the way, yesterday was a huge success. We'll say yes to the dress. There was a lot of young ladies who could not afford to go do the things that got done yesterday for them, and they were able to go to the prom. How many dresses were handed out? Over, the, t over 20 dresses were handed out. There were about four or five. <laughs> four or five young ladies who came here yesterday and got hair, makeup, nails, and everything stuff done. That's why Jared was here and out the door as fast as he could. He was scared they were going to paint his nails or something. I don't know. <laughs> But those are the things that we're supposed to... Okay, now, we, we can talk about husbands and wives. Okay, that's good. Okay, what about our children? Aggravating me to death. Did you hear what he said to me? He backtalked me. I can't believe he, he was man enough to do that. Or, she's late again. I told her to be in here at this time. She's late again. How many of us understand that when we shape and form our children, the words matter and words count? If you tell someone that they're dumb and they're stupid, guess what they're going to start thinking? They're going to think they're dumb and stupid. My dad used to have a word for me. Of course, he always done this when he was playing with me. He didn't really mean it. I don't think he meant it. <laughs> I ought to think about that one for a bit. But he'd always look at me and say, you ignoramus. <laughs> I always want to know what an ignoramus was. I guess it's me, I don't know. <laughs> but he would, I mean, he would always do that while he was playing and stuff. And when my dad was serious, you knew he was serious. There wasn't no play about him. But... How we, how we treat our children and the things that we say to our children matter. It's going to go to their self-esteem. It's going to be how they see themselves coming up. 
And if, if we don't speak positive things into their life, now I'm not saying don't correct the negative things. Don't, don't, don't think I'm saying just be all positive, all positive. I mean, we've got to correct the negative things. We can't have children running out in the middle of the street, right? There is a reason why we yell and scream at our children don't to stop if they're running toward the middle of the street, right? That's good for them, right? They need to know that. But we also need to know that we need to lift them up and build them up and take on the positives and different things and stuff like that. Uh, it, 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 it will go to their self-esteem. It will go to how they see themselves as they grow up in life. How about the coworker? How many times do we get so caught up in our jobs that we just kind of see the co-workers as just another part of the job instead of as a person. We look at them as if they're just another tool, an inanimate object that we use, rather than looking at them as a child of God. And how is it that our attitude, how, how do we, how is our attitude towards those people? When they mess up, I mean royally. What about when they cost an awful lot of money because they messed up? Does that need to be corrected? Absolutely. But how do we correct? And what's our attitude when we correct? Have you ever heard somebody tell you as a parent, don't ever correct your children when you're angry? You ever heard that? If you find yourself angry, that's not the time to correct your children. When you find yourself angry, that's not the time to talk to a coworker about something. Because there won't be and nothing will be, nothing good will come from it. What's our attitude like? Here's what I want to. Here's what I want to get us back to and see what what it is. We just got through finishing last Sunday. We we the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How do you think Jesus' attitude was with the disciples? Would you say it was overall positive? Would you say it was all positive? Would you say you remember a, a, a verse in the Bible that says, he looked at them and says, how much longer have, have I got to keep talking to you guys and you not get it? But even in that was not negative. It was positive. You see, when we look at the example of what Jesus gave us and, what he, and how he told us how we're supposed to handle things and how we're supposed to handle people, it's all in a positive manner, not in a negative way. When we go through and we go out here and we go out into the world, now listen to me, just as sure as you walk out in this world today and you've heard this message today and I've preached this message today, somebody is going to check my attitude today. How about when you go to eat? The place is really busy. And they had a waitress or two call in. And they're doing the very best that they possibly can to get the food out to you. And that waitress is just, I mean, she's running just as for all she can. Are we going to be upset and angry because our food didn't get here when we thought it was supposed to get here? What about if the waitress is having a bad day? Have you, ever, have you ever stopped and asked your waitress before, how's your day going? Or do we just see them as a tool to get my food here? Try this today. If you go out to eat today, just try this. If you go out to eat somewhere today, your waitress or waiter, whoever they are, why don't you ask them how their day's going today? And ask them, we're about to pray over our food. Is there anything I can pray for you about today? 
See if your food don't get there a little quicker. <laughs> See if your glass doesn't stay empty as long. You see, when we, we're talking about our attitude and how, what our, how our attitude affects people, and, 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 and listen to me, our attitude does and will affect people. It'll affect our children. It'll affect our, our, our spouses. It'll check, it, will, it will affect our, our coworkers. Everybody that we're around because they see our attitude. If our attitude is right, if our attitude is good, if our attitude is positive, even if they are having a bad day, it will rub off on them. What if they're trying their best to ruin my good attitude? Whose responsibility is it to keep a good attitude? Does my life... Let me see how to put that. Am I going to allow how they may act or react to something or another ruin my life or ruin my day? You see, I'm responsible for me. I can only control me. I can't control the other person. Now, I can have influence on the other person. And if I'm going to have a positive attitude, if I'm going to check my attitude and, and try to stay positive, then that's going to be able to help others stay positive too. How many times have you ever come to somebody and they're having an absolutely bad day and they look at you and stuff and you, you, you go back at them with positive attitude and they stop and go, I'm sorry. I, hey, you know, the day's just not going very good. I'm sorry. It has an effect. There's a reason why this is in the Bible. There's a reason why we should always think, stop and think about our attitude. Finally, Paul says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. Now, here's the thing about that. Paul is using himself as an example. Paul is saying, here's what I'm trying to do, and here's th this is the gist of what we should be trying to do ourselves. We should be trying our best to put things into a positive manner for other people. We are called to that. Who's Lord and Savior of your life? Who died for your sins? Who took that sin upon himself? Who went into the grave because of that? Who come out of the grave because of that? You see, if we go back to it and, we, and it all rolls back, it all comes back, who in the world is it that we're representing? Y'all have to forgive my computer. This thing does this every once in a while. There'll be a little deal pop up there. But this whole thing is, is for Jesus. Listen to me. Our whole life is about Jesus as a Christian. And when we, we, if we don't get this, if, if this is not something that we as Christians begin to mature into, to grab hold of, to grasp hold of, and, and for it to be something that is real and true in our life, if you become a Christian, what our, our personal relationship with him and what it's all about is it's supposed to be all about Jesus. It's to represent Him in our lives. Now, we have our attitudes. I mean, we, have our, we have our personalities. We have all of those things that we have that God has given us, and we're to use that for Him. But it's supposed to be used for Jesus. That means my attitude is supposed to be used for Jesus. So it means that whenever I come into contact with people, my attitude should reflect who? Jesus. My attitude should always be about reflecting who? And I know some people say, well, you know what, Al, I, I just can't do that. You know? I just can't. Yes, you can. It's right here. This, this is what it's saying right here. This is who we're supposed to be. I go back to that one, that one old saying that I, I tell you, I, I just hate for people to say something like, well, that's just who I am. Been this way for this many years, I can't change. Yes, you can. 
If you can't change, what you're saying is God doesn't have the power to change you. If we're sitting here saying I'm too old and you can't teach an old dog new tricks and things and stuff, then you're, you're not going to change. That's a fact. When the Holy Spirit reveals something to us and we're not supposed to be doing it anymore, what are we supposed to do? Stop doing it. Right? Which requires what? Change. I've got to change. I've got to do something different. I've got to go a different direction. I've got to go a different way. If I look at this and I say, well, I just can't, I just, there's nothing, I can't do this, then I'm telling God, you cannot change me. You don't have enough influence over me to change me. This whole Bible, this whole book is meant to do what? Influence. It's meant to influence us so we can do what? Change into what? Christ-like. To be Christ-like. It's meant for us to take the, what is inside of this book and apply it to our life in such a way that what it will help us to do is to change, which then helps us to do what? Reflect Jesus, which allows our attitude to be what? Positive. Y'all either struggling to wake up or y'all are thinking awful hard, one of the two. You see, Christ died on the cross so that we could have a different attitude. We could have his attitude. We could take on his attitude. We can allow his attitude to influence us in our life. I think sometimes what happens is we get so caught up that Christ died on the, on the cross for our sin then we forget there's more to it than just that. How many of us remember and understand that there's more to the Christian experience than just getting saved? There's more to the Christian experience than just salvation. The whole reason why he gave us a book. <laughs> All right, ladies. How many of your husbands get, the, get their new cooker or their new whatever out or something other like that, and they start looking at the pictures and start putting it together? They don't ever read the instructions, right? That's what I do. I look at the pictures. I can put that together, <laughs> right? Except I forgot part B, right? Then I got to go back and read the instructions. Why did God give us a book to read if there's not instructions? If all there was was just the salvation experience and just getting saved was all that mattered, all that counted, then why in the world did Jesus preach and teach for three years? Why in the world did he influence 12 other men to, to, go, into the, in, to go into the world? If that's all there is. You see, he wants us to understand and realize that our attitude matters. How we look at things, how we treat people, all of that matters. Probably the most famous scripture that we have for what I'm talking about is Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices... Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Have you ever thought, have you ever stopped to think about how, how God sees your body? How many of you ever read that scripture that says that your body is the temple of who? That means he lives where? Right? So we're to look at our, our bodies and make it as a, as a living sacrifice, the way we live our life, our attitude, the way we live our life. 
And it is to be holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we take God's Word and apply it to our life and put it in our life that it might affect our attitude towards things, when we remember that we are not our own, our bodies, our whole life are living sacrifices to God. What happens to a, what hap, when in the Old Testament days, when they put the sacrifice on the altar, what happened to the sacrifice? Consumed by what? Burn up. So here's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be on fire for God. You're supposed to be on fire for God. Our bodies, our lives are living sacrifices to Him. We do this, because what we do is we renew our mind. Paul reminds us and tells us, he says, what, what do I do? He says, what do I do? I die what? Daily. Which Paul is saying, and Paul's not, Paul's not sitting here going, okay, you've got to get saved again today. That's not what he's saying. But he is saying what I've got to do is I've got to renew myself. I've got to renew my attitude. I've got to renew my mind that I might be able to know who I'm living for today. Who I am sacrificing for today. How, how, who my body is being used up for today. At Wednesday night we talked about this just a little bit. We talked a little bit about it. How many of you have, you have an attitude in the morning that says, Oh Lord, it's morning. <laughs> Honest, huh? <laughs> oh Lord, it's morning. Oh, no. Don't talk to me. I ain't had my coffee yet. How many of you have seen the little coffee cup that's been advertised out? It says, it says, don't talk to me until after I have my first cup of coffee. And then it says, on second thought, just don't talk to me. <laughs> or how many of us get up in the morning and go, Lord, it's morning. I do too. I mean, that's kind of the way I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a morning person. I like to get up and get out of bed. If I don't get started right away, then my whole day's shot. I know I'm talking about how personalities and different things, stuff like that. But what about the attitude? Uh, the, old, the old saying, I said this Wednesday night to the bunch that was here Wednesday night, but the prayer is, Lord, today has been a great day. I cannot thank you enough for the day that I've had today. Things are going so well. They're going so good. I haven't had an argument. I hadn't said a dirty word. I, had, I mean... Nobody's bugged me, and I haven't bugged anybody. Everything is going absolutely, as Becky would say, hunky-dory. But I'm about to get out of bed. <laughs> so, Lord, help me today to be who I need to be today. Help me to live my life today the way you would have me live my life today. That's what Paul's talking about. That's what he was saying when he says, I die daily. He is being constantly reminded that today I have a new day. It is a new day for me to be able to live for the Lord, to be able to serve the Lord today. So how's my attitude? How is my attitude today? How's my, how, how are things going today? Am I going to let the one single event that really didn't go very well run the rest of my day? Am I going to let that one moment in time of my life run the rest of my life? So that it affects my attitude in a negative way. Let me remind you of something. If Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life, you've been forgiven. Know it 
believe it, it's real, and it's true. If I have sincerely asked for forgiveness of sin in my life, if I have repented of my sin, if I have asked Jesus Christ to come into my life that I might live for Him, it has happened. It has taken place. No doubts about that. So don't let Satan let you keep looking in the rearview mirror to see the things that have happened in the past. Brothers and sisters, you have a future. You have today, and you have what God will allow you to have next week, next month, next year. And what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to move forward into that. Forgetting what is behind, looking forward to what is ahead, and being active right now in this time. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's my attitude should be today, Lord, help me to be who you want me to be today, that I might be able to influence someone else today. You never, ever know. One of the things I get made fun of by Michelle and, and Danielle a lot is when I go down the road, I wave at everybody. I do. I, I mean, to Bartlesville and back, I mean, wherever I'm going, if I pass a car, I'm waving at them and everything, you know. And they're like, why are you waving at them? I said, well, you never know. They might be having a bad day. You know? They, they might be having a bad day, and my, the, my wave just might make them think, well, at least somebody waved at me today. Brothers and sisters, I'm almost, I'm almost done. I know we're ready to go. With all the things that we've talked about, with everything that we've said this morning, what we're talking about is life. We're talking about people's lives. And in effect, we are talking about eternity. That's the business we're in. We're in the people business to ensure that people go to heaven instead of hell. So when I look at this and I look at it and I'm waving at people going down the road and different things and stuff, and somebody just might think, he waved at me. Nobody else has waved at me, but that one person did. What if that one person was on their way home to commit suicide? What if that one person was on their way home to commit murder? What if that one person was on their way to steal something from somebody else? What if a single wave passing by somebody going down the highway changes their attitude? What if some way the Holy Spirit can work through just a single wave, a single smile, a single handshake, and change somebody's life forever. Now some of us may say, well, Pastor, you're getting kind of, I mean, that's kind of getting, I believe that with all of my heart. Because we don't know what the Holy Spirit is doing on the other side. The Holy Spirit says, you know, it, He's working on somebody and something happens in their life. What if it means... Wouldn't it be neat to be in heaven one of these days and, and you go diddy bopping down the streets of gold, you know, like, you know, and somebody goes, grabs you and spins you around and says, hey, hey, nice place, huh? Do I know you? The guy says, no, you don't really know me. But I'll tell you what you did do. You were on your way to Bartlesville, and I was coming the other way, and I was having a terrible day. And you waved at me. And I thought to myself, that person doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me, doesn't know a thing in the world about how my day went today, but they thought enough to wave. And it changed my life forever. I'm here because you took the time to go. <laughs> and or we can make that a whole lot more serious than that. You see, our attitude and how we face things and the things that we go through matters. 
God uses all of us. All of us. To be able to do the things that needs to be done in this world. God uses all that we are to help us be who we're supposed to be for him. That we might be able to go outside of these walls and be the church. God's church. Amen. So how's your attitude? How's your attitude today? How's your attitude going to be tomorrow morning when you got to get up and go to work? Huh? Are you going to jump up and go, Woo, thank God it's Monday morning. Right? Krista says, no way, it's just not going to happen. Just, no. Nah. I'll be thankful, but I just, you know, yeah, okay. Just give me my cup of coffee or two or three <laughs> or however many it takes, right? Go be a difference for God. Go be a difference for Jesus Christ. Our attitude matters. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Now, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not telling us all that. I know life's not just absolutely great for everybody. I know there's problems. I know there's things that are happening. I know there's things that we've had to face in life. And I know that, uh, I know that those things that we've had to face in life are unpleasant. A good many of them. But let's remember who we serve. And let's remember that we are children of God. And let's remember that because of that, we have a joy that runs so deep in our life that our attitude doesn't have to be on the negative side of things. The glass is really half full. Amen? Stand with me if you